In this video, we are going to make a simple animation. It's going to be the easiest tutorial of this entire free course. And I'm going over some of the main concepts that I've already touched upon in the previous free course where we animated again. Check that out if you want to learn more about animation in the graph editor or follow this tutorial to refresh your knowledge if you've already seen it. So let's get started straight away. All right, so right now we've got this blender right here and I am going to make some new blenders that are going to appear from behind this one. So I'm going to take all of this, select the blender, select all of it, like so, shift D, Y, bring it over here. And now we can see that this is a separate blender, place it into its own collection, new collection, blender two. So now we've got blender two, shift S, cursor to select it, empty, plane axis and scale this up. Now I'm going to click on Blender 2, right mouse click, select objects. This will select every object in the collection. Control, empty, and now we've got the empty selected last, which means that it is the active object. Control P, object, keep transform. And now if we move the empty, the Blender will move as well. So we are going to change this color. Head on over into this object right here, shader editor. Go to the brushed metal, copy it to make a new texture out of this. Otherwise, this texture would change as well. We don't want that, only this texture should change. So I'm heading over into this color ram that we made before. Take it right over there and make it blue. So this will be a light blue color. And for this one, I'm going to select a darker blue color. And now we've got a blue blender. Now we also need an orange blender, but first let's animate this. So let's take this empty, go over to the timeline, go to frame one, press I, go to frame 72, which is three seconds, adjust this timeline. We might make it 50 frames or 48, it might be two seconds, we'll see later. Move this empty to the side on the X axis, somewhere over here and press I. So the first thing I'm going to do is check whether we have the composition guides because we want to have this happen on the thirds. So click on one, control shift zero, and now we have our camera right over here, which is exactly in the middle as it should be. Let's double check that. So go over here into the camera settings, go down to composition guides, select center, and this is definitely not center. So I'm going to GX, bring this to the side until this line is crossing this blender circle perfectly. And now this is in the middle as it should be. Now in the camera composition guide, we can go over to thirds and uncheck center. And now we have the thirds right over there. So let's make sure that this one is somewhere in the middle of this third section. And actually we did it quite perfectly. Something like this, press I, and now it is standing in the right location. Now this animation is going to be very boring. It's just going to move linearly towards the side. So let's go ahead and change the empty animation in the graph editor. So I'm going to press control tab. That's a little shortcut for you. If you press control tab right over here in the timeline, you will go over to the graph editor. So that's a really easy way to switch around. Which location did we move on? Obviously, we moved on the X location, which is the red line right over here. So I'm going to lock all of this off, go into the X location and press A and dot. And now we have this fully in our screen. If you do not see this, go over to edit preferences, go to animation right over here and then select only show selected curve keyframes. And then you will see the curve like I do. Let's bring this upwards because we want it to be fast in the beginning and then slow down as it enters its final stage. So I'm going to take this G and just move it upwards. Let's see what this looks like. Still a bit too slow, why? Well, this curve over here is already slowing down. So we should take this line as well, G and X. Do you remember the video called the new way to understand the graph editor in 149 seconds? Well, that's going to be this part. So right over here, it's going to be very fast in the beginning and it's going to be slowing down near the end. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to take this G and X and it will move around very quickly and then it will slow down and this always looks smooth, which is why we do it. This is the first animation. And now we need an orange one as well, but we also have to animate the camera. So let's go over to frame zero. Let's take the entire Blender 2, select objects, Shift D, M, Blender 3. Very good. Now I'm going to take this empty, I'm going to duplicate it and it's empty 003 right now. Now, as you can see, our other Blender is still moving along with the original empty. So we have to select all of this, Go to frame zero, alt P to remove its parent. And right now you can see it is standing still. So move back to frame one, once again, select empty 003 because we want to parent the empty when the origin point is at the right position. So don't parent it when it's right over here, for example, because it will mess things up. Go over to frame one, control P, object, keep transform. And now it should move along once again. But if we change this line on the empty, you will be able to see that one of the blenders is moving and the other one is not. We want to make this blender go to the other side. So how can we do that? We're going to press on N and right here we see the location. So if we go over to frame 72, this is the final location 
on the right side. So logically, if we place this towards the other side, so in the minus, then it should go to the exact same distance, but then on the opposite direction. So I'm going to take all of this, control C, the X location, minus before it, like so. Make sure that we have all these boxes disconnected. So there's no locks on our keyframes. Press I. We also want to change the interpolation of this. And now as you can see, it is still moving around. So it's first going to the right and then it's going to the left. And that's because we've got this handle right over here that we changed. But simply what we got to do is bring it down. And now we have the correct animation. I'm going to select this one because it should be orange. I'm just going to use orange and blue like I always do. I think it suits very well for my channel. But I'm going to take this, copy it, go over here, select an orange color, then take this one and select a darker orange color. And right now we've got this. So the animation of the blenders is done, but there is no camera animation and we should probably add it if we want to make it look even more cool. So shift A, curve, curve circle. We're going to let the camera follow a path. Right now we've got a curve circle right over here. I'm going to scale it up so you can actually see it. It's right over there. R, Y, 90, because I want it to be like this. So we can move the camera like so. Select the camera. Now go over to the object constraints, which is this one. Select follow path right over there. Select this, Bessier circle. And now the camera is all the way over here. And the reason for it is because of its location data. So we can see that it is on the Y minus 22. So it's going to interpret that in a different fashion than we actually like. The simple solution, select all of the location data, press zero, and now it should be on the curve exactly. And that is what happened. So I'm going to scale this curve up. Let's have a look in our camera and it's rotated. Well, the curve is rotated. So it's following along with the curve in the specific axis. So we just take the camera, RZZ90, and now it is supposed to be straight. And that's exactly what it does. So if we take this offset, the camera will move along on the curve. But if we want this camera to focus on the blender the entire time, it's not going to do it like this. And animating it by hand is going to be tough. So the way to fix it, add another constraint, track two, track two, and what do we want to track it to? Well, let's select the Blender 1 again. So select all of these circles and this thing. Shift S, cursor to select it. And now we've got a cursor right here. Shift A, add an empty. I'm going to select the sphere simply because I can see it better. And then I will go to the camera, select it with this picker tool. And now if we animate this offset, it should be following that curve the entire time. Of course, we didn't do the thirds for nothing. So right now, our blenders are kind of in the wrong direction and we should probably change the scale of this circle because this was the way I intended it. Now go into the camera and we want to start right over here. So basically with offset zero. Go to the timeline, go to frame one, press I. And now all the blenders are hidden behind this one because if we were to start over here, you can already see there's really no magic. It's all a trick. And we don't want that, it must seem like magic. So go to frame 72, bring this camera upwards like so and place a keyframe then take this empty go to frame one place a keyframe 72 and maybe we can place it somewhere a little bit more over here so all the blenders are in the screen and now our camera is moving a little bit towards the top so let's go click on Control tab and let's change the animation for this the offset is only one single line so all we can do is make it go faster like so in the beginning by bringing this towards the side as well. So it's going very fast. Our skier is moving down the slope or the mountain and it's slowing down as it's nearing the end. Like this. And we can probably do the same for our empty, which should move along with approximately the same pace. So let's close everything off. Open the Y location, which is the location going straight to our screen. Press I dot. Let's see what we've got. Press A dot. Let's make it go fast in the beginning and slow down near the end. So I don't want the blenders to run out of screen. And everybody knows I like to be economic with my time. So I'm not going to spend any more time on this. I'm simply going to cheat it by going into the camera, change the focal length by a little bit. And now everything will work out fine and the blenders will remain in screen without me spending any more time. So that's a little trick that you can use. Always save your time. Don't be a doofus and spend hours on useless tasks. Always make sure to ask yourself the question, how can I do this faster? And you will always come up with a solution. All right, so this was the final animation. We repeated some knowledge from the previous course. If you haven't watched that one yet, go ahead and do so because it's very important to know all the basics. That's it for this tutorial. As I said, it's quite easy. You can play around with the settings if you'd like and make something of your own. I hope you're having fun with this free Blender in Blender course. And if you do, click on subscribe. Also, check out my Gumroad or Blender Market for free and paid assets that are worth your time. Click here to watch the next video.